Welcome everyone to the CFO Swimmer Watchers technical analysis video for the week of March 4th through March 8th. With that, let's start off with the markets. So the S&P 500 closed at a new all-time high price at $512.85. But on top of that, we hit a new all-time high price of $513.29. So just based on that alone, we're clearly seeing the overall relative strength and resiliency of the overall stock market. However, there was an incident last week that clearly exemplified and demonstrated the entire resiliency of the market and for that we need to go back to the 15 minute time frame my favorite intraday time frame so if you guys remember from the CFO discord last Thursday I highlighted this forming bearish H pattern now before I delve further into this we need to talk about this gap up so from last Wednesday's closing price to last Thursday's opening price, we had a very nice gap up, but about 30 minutes after market open, we saw a very large move back to the downside and this caused this gap up to be filled around, I would say 75%. And so after this initial move down, we had this consolidation that eventually formed into this said bearish H pattern. And I told you guys that if we break below this H pattern's support level that was sitting at $507 or specifically at $506.85, we're gonna see a very quick and immediate flush to the downside and that meant we will be filling in the rest of this gap up so about 25% here as highlighted by this circle and then right after that we will bounce at this ascending support trend line and so that's exactly what we did but the more significant part about this was not the break to the downside, but rather the bounce that came right after this flush to the downside. So usually after uh, we see a breakdown like this on the intraday time frame, we tend to see a small bounce that usually turns into a lower high pivot point. And that lower high pivot point facilitates a new lower low. But instead of that happening, <laughs> what we got was the complete opposite. So after having a very, very low volume bounce, we continued to move on up higher, making higher highs and higher lows for the rest of the day. And on Thursday, we closed right at the highs or the opening price on that same day. So thanks to this continuous run up, we were able to kind of right, come right back to where the opening price was. And if you go back on the daily time frame, that's exactly what we have. We have a doji candlestick as the closing price literally was right on top of the opening price. And the difference was one cent. That's right. So the opening price was $508.07 and then the closing price was $508.08. But now you guys might be scratching your head, you know, hey Andrew, isn't this an indecision candlestick? Well, that's exactly what I'm pointing out here. So just based on the 15 minute time frame alone and on the daily time frame here, the market has clearly told us that the trend is to the upside and this upside trend is very very strong and resilient to any type of a downward pressure from sellers and we got that confirmation last Friday when the price continued to move on up higher 
and higher and higher until we hit that new all-time high price of $513.29 and ultimately closing at $512.85. Now, that was a very quick summary of what happened last week. However, I am still thinking that we will get a textbook pullback. Now, let me make sure to clear the air. I am not looking for a market crash. That will mean that I will want to see from current prices here at all time highs, a 20% plus move to the downside. But remember, as I've been saying for the past couple of weeks and for the entire month of February, if there is a pullback, especially a textbook pullback, we should be seeing a pullback of at least five to 10%. And that is actually the textbook pullback percentage range. And so if you guys remember, I've been looking for a pullback to, like this says, like it says it here, 477.50. And that was the previous level of resistance that we had on the daily time frame. And so if you were to go from the current all-time high closing price and move all the way back down to this 477.50 level. That is roughly a 7% pullback, which is again within the parameters of a textbook pullback percentage range between 5 to 10%. So my kind of a insurance way of thinking here of a potential pullback in the future is still viable very much viable and yes of course if we continue to move on up higher which i honestly hope we do that can change all right obviously if we start to move past 10 percent if i have to retrace from the future all-time high price all the way back down to 477.50 I'm probably going to have to choose a new support level for a potential retest on a potential pullback. So now obviously that's really far out into the future and essentially into speculation territory. But again, all I'm looking for is a relatively tame textbook pullback. And just as a reminder, the daily 50 SMA has now gone way over this 477.50 level. And so if it were to pull back, I would expect to see some very good buying coming in from the buyers as they try to defend this very large area of support that this daily 50 SMA brings in. All right? So there's a lot of tiny indications and indicators that can completely derail my potential future insurance type of thinking. Um, but again, I'm not too worried about that. All I'm looking for is that potential probability of a pullback as we continue to go up higher and higher into uncharted waters. Again, when we're moving into the quote unquote no man's land here into all time high territory. We're not basing any type of price action or price trends that we're currently looking at off of previous data points like price levels. So we do not know when a top is going to come or we do not know when a pullback is going to occur. So again, just as a lasting reminder, we're not looking for a market crash. We're looking for a potential textbook market pullback of at least five to 10%. So make sure you guys keep that in the back of your brains. Okay, so with that, let's take a look at our first name, SWKS. Now, I wanna start off this name on the weekly time frame because I mean, if you guys have been with this for a long time now, but again, for all the new members, 
This weekly time frame looks very, very enticing. Why? Well, first of all, this entire area here is what we call a macro multi-year base chart pattern. And this specific multi-year base chart pattern starts out at July of 2022. So this base spans over a year. And whenever we're looking at a base that spans multiple years, we need to hone in on it. We need to be hawking it because they tend to give out the best types of swing trades or even position trades to the upside. And especially, SWKS is a semiconductor name. And you might be scratching your head, hey, it doesn't really look at, like a semiconductor name because as you guys should know by now, since last year, well, actually all of last year, semis have been leading the market run up. But SWKS has not been doing that. Instead, it's been stuck at the same price ranges that we have seen back in, well, 2022. So it really sucks that this name has not been moving in tandem with the overall semiconductor sector but this is an opportunity for us to capitalize on because that means, as you guys know my favorite, favorite word, this ticker is a laggard. Okay, so hopefully you guys have read the newsletter first, but let me remind you guys again, SWKS is a laggard. So what does this mean? Well, specifically, since this ticker is a semiconductor ticker, if there is an overall market pullback, that means that leading semi names, okay, that concentration of money that's in the leading semi names will come out. Right, we'll see a money outflow of that concentrated group of investors or traders that have been in these leading semi names. And some of them from that group will be looking for the next semiconductor name to invest in and that would be eventually the lagging semiconductor names and that will point us right to this specific ticker SWKS and so that is the next major reason why I'm looking at this name because if we do see that money outflow from the big and leading semiconductor names we'll be seeing a small portion of that going into these lagging and smaller semiconductor names that have not moved in tandem with the rest of the semiconductor sector. Okay, so that is kind of the longer term perspective that I have for this specific ticker. So with that, from a technical perspective, we are looking at a very large macro wedge chart pattern that mostly makes up this multi-year base and obviously this uh, wedge chart pattern is not completely formed since the price continues to uh, adhere to both of these two macro trend lines this descending resistance trend line and this ascending support trend line so again obviously we have not yet completed this chart pattern so there's nothing much to say until we get a break either to the upside or to the downside since a wedge chart pattern is a neutral chart pattern but in this case we're looking for a breakout to the upside because again we are bullish now with that in mind with all of that in mind if you go on the daily time frame surprise surprise we have yet again another micro wedge chart pattern that is within that weekly large macro wedge chart pattern but there's one single difference this micro wedge chart pattern has been completed and how do I know this well the price action was actually able to get very very close to and very near the convergence point of these two trend lines this descending resistance trend line and this ascending support trend line just like I've shown you on the macro which chart pattern on the weekly time frame and in fact 
last Friday thanks to the overall market's bullish price action to new all-time highs this one was able to break out over this descending resistance trend line and overall this micro wedge chart pattern but most importantly if you go a little bit deeper here into the details the price has been able to break over and close at the daily 50 SMA so the price is now over the daily 50 SMA which has been a huge crux of any attempt by the bulls to create a new reversal to the upside so we see one right here okay this was an attempt but ultimately failed and then while we start to consolidate and form this nice micro wedge chart pattern the price again was unable to get over this daily 50 SMA so again this daily 50 SMA always always acts as a huge area of resistance as a huge crux to any bulls that are attempting to reverse the price back to the upside so for SWKS here our plan of attack uh, can come from two different entry points so first of all with this current consolidation that you guys are seeing right here there is a specific level that a lot of buyers have been bidding at specifically this 105 level okay so 105 dollars and in fact last week that was the breakout level on friday so if you guys see this wick here from last friday's candlestick we see that the price came back down to retest this descending resistance trend line bounce right back up and over this 105 horizontal resistance level and eventually close over both of this 105 resistance level and this descending resistance trend line now in the event that we come back down to retest 105 again just for confirmation that yes the price has broken out and we're looking for a new move to the upside we can see an early but riskier bounce entry at 105.10 but again if you guys don't want any part of a potential and again riskier earlier entry point at 105.10 you guys can simply look at the next point of entry which is a long entry over 107.55 now why 107.55 well because if we take a look at the previous pivot high point compared to last Friday's high which was this candlestick here this daily candlesticks high was at 107.52 so if we're able to break over this previous pivot high point we should be seeing a very nice entry point at 107.55 which is again going to be our higher high compared to this previous higher high pivot point now for price targets wise I'm looking at 110.50 as the first ideal profit target point now the reason why I say 110.50 is that well based on the theme of looking at the previous high pivot points for this specific name I also took a look at the next previous pivot high point and this is exactly uh, what I saw on this specific candlestick so 110.16 and so obviously I kind of rounded down to the next whole number level of 110.50 to keep our price targets as simple as possible but the, the next reason why I wanted to take a look at this um, specific area here was not just solely because of the previous high pivot point but also because it's right underneath this gap down that I've uh, that I've highlighted over here and so if we're able to overtake 110.50 then it'll be very easy to get to the next whole number level of $111 so this is our next and second profit target 
and if we're able to take over $111, that would also be very easy to take out the sellers that are inside this gap down. And that should be relatively easy because at that point and by that point, uh, we should be seeing a lot more influx of buyers compared to sellers. And we should be already in a nice uptrend. And so if we're able to completely take over $111 and continuously move to the upside, we will fill in this gap down that we have never filled in. And eventually, ideally, my last profit target will be $115.50. That's right. This weekly gigantic level of a resistance, 115.50. All right, so this is a level that the price had continued uh, to retest from all of 2023. And so if we're able to come back up to retest 115.50, that will be my final price target. And from a longer term perspective though, now this is kind of going to uh, that speculation territory, but if we're able to come back to 115.50, then there is a possibility for us to see a longer term reversal back to the upside. And so again, on the weekly, for the past couple of weeks, specifically, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks, including last week, we have been literally gaining energy for a potential momentum break to the upside. And so this consolidation here can provide us with a potential break to the upside and a potential larger, longer term move over 115.50 and eventually have SWKS become the center of attention for a lagging semiconductor name. All right, and we wanna see that because we wanna see that money, that potential money outflow from semiconductors, the leading semiconductors, and coming into a lagging semiconductor name like SWKS. All right, so that is it for the first ticker. Let's take a look at our second and last ticker for this week, VLO. Now for VLO, I also want to take a look at this one from the weekly time frame first. Now, just from a general perspective here, this is a very, very good looking chart. Now, if I even zoom out, it looks even better. Why? Well, first of all, VLO has been moving sideways for years. And in fact, it's actually very, very similar to our first ticker, SWKS. So VLO has been consolidating and forming a base at its all-time high price ranges. And in fact, it has been doing that since June of 2022. So that's just one month previous of SWKS where its own multi-year macro base started in July of 2022. So for VLO, this entire macro multi-year base started in June of 2022. And since then, the price really has not gotten anywhere other than making new all-time high prices, which is seen by this yellow arrow here, and then this second yellow arrow here. Now, this will be important, but I'm not gonna go into it just yet. So with VLO, uh, one thing that I want you guys to take a look at is that the price had continued to stick over and stay over the previous all-time high consolidation area. So if you take a look right around here, so this is around 2018, mid-2018, we saw that the price uh, was really trying to start forming a nice flag or at the very least a base at all-time high levels, but in fact, it failed and we saw a very rapid move to the downside and obviously that 2018 market sell-off really helped uh, with this overall move down for this VLO ticker and 
after this initial rundown, this company had a very hard time trying to keep the triple digit share price number. And it was, it was not able to keep that triple digit share price number for years to come. But for the fact that currently we continue to stay over this previous all time high consolidation area and over and staying over this triple digit share price number clearly indicates to you and us that VLO wants to continue to go up higher. And so this is what we consider a textbook blue sky breakout. When we have a large macro multi-year base that is sitting at its current all-time high price ranges and it's consolidating where it wants to literally move on up higher where we see that blue sky breakout. And if you guys don't know what a blue sky breakout means, well, that simply states that a blue sky breakout uh, will allow a price to continuously move to the upside and make new all-time highs day by day, week by week, and month by month. That's right. When we see a blue sky breakout, we tend to see a very long-term uptrend into new all-time high price territories. And it really, really helps to be looking at this VLO chart pattern right now when we have the current market just continuously moving to the upside day by day, week by week, and month by month. And so again, a blue sky breakout is really, really a, a, a good uh, chart pattern to be looking out for because VLO with this very nice um, base here, or specifically, if you guys are looking for a current chart pattern, an ascending triangle chart pattern with this nice ascending support trend line with a flat resistance level at 150.50, uh, we can definitely be looking for a very good breakout to the upside, especially when the market is facil facilitating a potential blue sky breakout as the market is in itself continuously moving to all time high territory. Okay, so that is exactly what we're looking for here, a blue sky breakout from mid to the long term perspective. Now, with all of that information in your head, if you go on the daily time frame, we have yet again a micro base forming here, just like what we saw in SWKS. We have a micro base where it's kind of a flat base here where the price has been consolidating between 144 and 135.50. But last week, it actually attempted to break over this tiny micro base over 144 with very, very low volume. And that is the reason why we saw a nice rejection at this 147 resistance level that is also seen on the weekly time frame, okay? And eventually it came right back down within the parameters set up by this micro base between 135.50 and 144. And so this is where our first entry comes in. Okay, so again, an earlier but riskier entry point over the previous high of the day, which is last Friday's candlestick of 144.14, which gives us an entry point over 144.20. Okay, so just a very simple but a riskier and earlier entry point over the previous high of the day. But again, if you guys don't want to risk that earlier entry point, you guys can just look for a more confirmed entry point to the upside over 147.10. Now, why is it 147.10? Well, you guys have already guessed it. You guys should have guessed it right. This previous high pivot point. So on this daily candlestick here, we had a high of 147.06. And that's the most recent previous pivot high point. And so if you're able to break over this pivot high point, then there's a likely chance that we can see more confident buyers coming in 
to support the price up higher and help us move away from this previous high pivot point. And also, now we go back on the weekly time frame, this weekly resistance level, this macro resist resistance level here, right? And so that will give us our first, okay, profit target of 147. And if we're able to break over 147 and continuously run up higher, our next profit target will be 150.50. And now you guys can definitely guess why I chose 150.50. Well, these two arrows come back into play and into focus. So this yellow arrow here clearly tells us that this weekly candlestick had a high of 150.39. That's that is very, very clear. And so if we're able to hit 150.50 in itself, that will be making a new higher high based on this previous high pivot point. All right, so that is our second price target. And then lastly, if we're able to break over 150.50, then that will give us the next all-time high target of this right here. So this second arrow clearly indicates that this weekly candlestick had a high of 152.20, which is also the all-time high price for BLO. So if we're able to hit 152.20, then ideally uh, I will want to see BLO breaking over 152.20 and making a new all-time high. And again, that's exactly what we want mid to long term because again, what are we looking for? A blue sky breakout. And that is another, yet another reason why I would want to see the overall markets still moving to the upside because that will help facilitate a large blue sky massive breakout to the upside where we, where we see continuous bullish momentum day over day, week over week, and month over month. All right, so that is it for this CFO Swing and Watch technical analysis video. If you guys found this video informational, but most importantly, applicable, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. And if you guys have not subscribed yet to the CFO channel, make sure you guys subscribe and hit that notification bell as well. All right, have a great rest of your weekend and I'll see you guys tomorrow morning.